lately, my boyfriend and I have been going out for more walks, trying to get in some of the nice weather while we can, although right now it's raining. But anyway, not important. I've been trying to hike and enjoy nature and try to get some exercise in after all the quarantine poundage we put on. But I'm running into an issue. I like to use comfortable stretchy pants as most people I think would like to use when they're exercising. As most of my feminine people know, stretchy pants for feminine bodies do not have pockets. Or if they do, it's only one little tiny one meant for your phone, not really meant for your wallet and whatever else you need to carry with you. And I like to carry my keys, my phone, my wallet, and my inhaler. So that's a lot of stuff to hold in a tiny little slip pocket that's really only meant for one thing. So I was thinking, why not take advantage of the 18th century pair of pockets or the external pocket that you could tie around your waist. I wanted to kind of mix a blend of that 18th century pockets, but also with kind of the idea of like a fanny pack or and or also the aesthetics of like a punk leather motorcycle jacket. I have a stash of patches that I've been waiting to use on a jacket for forever and I just I'm like, hey, I should just use some of those for this because this is perfect. I don't have a machine to embroider with and I sure as heck don't want to embroider on faux leather. So iron-on patches are what I think will be the way to go. I also want to have a zipper in the equation because as I'm sure as secure as these pockets are with the little slit at the top and not letting things fall out, uh, I want to deter not only the things falling out but also pickpockets. And not that I've ever had an issue with pickpockets, but you know, just the idea of going hiking with one of these pockets on makes me worried that maybe something might try to jumble itself out of the pocket as well. Um, that or if I did encounter a pickpocket, I surely would feel them trying to unzip the zipper on this. So some solutions to problems I don't know if I'll ever have, but they're there. A quick word on historical adequacy. I want to approach this from a very historically adequate, not historically accurate approach, as uh, Noelle from Costuming Drama would say. I've been trying to get my own gatekeeping down about historical accuracy and what that means to me and if that's something I even want to try. So I want to break down my own uh, reservations on historical costuming and making stuff that I'll actually like and actually use in everyday life. So I'm coming at more of an approach of one, I have a more gothic and morning wear aesthetic, and two, I want to make stuff that I'm going to use and wear all the time. So it's more of a history bounding kind of angle as well. So let me show you how I made my 18th century pockets, but make it punk, goth, alt, whatever you want to call it. Here we go. <laughs> So starting off, I need a pattern. Now there's a couple resources online for patterns. I'll link below the VNA's pattern, but I wanted to make one that uh, was big enough for all my things. So I just used my phone as a measurement guide and cut kind of a rectangle out as you saw. And now I'm just measuring the slit and writing down what my pattern is. So if I put it away, I will know what it is later. Once I have my pattern, I can cut out my front and back pieces from my faux leather, and I will do the same with my lining. Here I'm just transferring the markings from my pattern to my front piece of my leather. This is the slit that I'll be inserting a zipper into later. Once I felt happy with what patches I want to use, all I need to do is iron these on. So 
So I thought all of these were iron-on patches, but it turns out they aren't all iron-on patches, and even the ones that are kind of don't really do a good job of ironing, if that makes sense. The glue was not so great on all of them, so I'm gonna end up having to sew most of them down, unfortunately, which kind of defeats the purpose of the iron-on, but c'est la vie. I also wanted to mention Medusa Training Co's video on a similar subject of a gothic 18th century pocket. Um, I believe she embroidered hers, but definitely go check her out. She needs some more love and she definitely has a similar aesthetic to myself. Here I'm just top stitching down those wily, not so iron on, iron on patches. This is kind of tedious and honestly I could have been a little bit more careful, but uh, you know, I'll let the being careful to the rest of you if you try this project. I have a very uh, devil may care attitude with my stitching uh, to my detriment and to the quickness of my projects being done faster. I don't know. I don't really have the best approach, but this was a lot of fun and I definitely will be doing some more of these pockets later on. Here I'm just making sure that my front lining piece also has the same slit as my uh, top pocket piece for the zipper to go in. Now I actually had to look up how to do this because uh, again I'm still pretty new with zippers but it was a pretty convoluted process and you can see I actually ended up cutting the end of it a little bit longer down from the zipper to have just a tiny bit more room getting things in and out. So I need to sew the right sides together of the top piece and the top lining and then I can flip that inside out and understitch and then sew the zipper on. Now that the regular stitching is done, I need to do an understitch, which is a technique that I learned how to do while making my birthday dress. Now if you haven't seen that video, link is down below, you should go check it out, I had a lot of fun. And if you like this video, you'll probably enjoy that one too. And here I am understitching the lining with the seam allowances both turned towards the lining side. This just helps with the bulk because uh, vinyl is pretty bulky and this will help me later when I'm sewing the zipper on.
And of course, my least favorite part of any project, the zipper. This was actually not as hard as it normally is, just because I'm not trying to hide the zipper as much. So I didn't really hate this method compared to the other ones, but it definitely wasn't the most fun anyway, just because the zippers, ugh. Now I'm ready to add the straps to the back. These are what is going to basically make the pocket hangable off of any belt. I didn't want to add a waist tie so that I was forced to only use one way of wearing this belt. I wanted it so I could use it with any belt I had, whether that be a faux leather tie or uh, my cute western belt or even my wide uh, like retro style belt works with this. So it really works with pretty much any outfit I really want it to. This part was incredibly fiddly. Uh, 10 out of 10 would not recommend trying to sew faux leather vinyl bias onto more faux leather vinyl. Not fun at all. Uh, but I did it and it works. <laughs> So I wanted to sew this using the traditional method where you baste the uh, basically wrong s no the insides together. You baste the insides together and then you will cover the edges with a bias tape. However, that does not go exactly to plan, and I do waste a lot of time uh, trying to machine sew a basting stitch and then also having to hand sew that basting stitch because the machine didn't want to do the basting and then ripping that out because, uh, well, you'll see. <laughs> I hand based the front and back pieces together and, spoiler alert, but I didn't even need to waste time on that. Here's more of that faux leather bias binding from Hell. Uh, on top of not only disliking trying to do zippers, I also absolutely cannot understand bias binding. Whether it's piping or bias binding, it confuses the heck of out of me. And this was probably the worst stuff to be practicing with because, ugh. You know, it just didn't want to do what it's supposed to do, but uh, you'll see what happens. On the bright side, I did end up getting to test out my walking foot, which is used for these thicker kinds of fabrics that are supposed to be less manageable. However, it didn't even end up working for this hot mess. Uh, but I'll know how to use it in the future, which makes me happy and optimistic.
so I'm not sure what's going on with my machine. I've never used the the walker foot before, but uh, whatever reason, the thread's not engaging correctly and it's doing this weird loopy thing. I've tried rethreading. I tried it on a different piece of fabric and it's fine on this one. I just tested it. Maybe it's my tension, I don't know. But it's driving me crazy, so I'm I'm gonna have to because it's ruining also the um, bias tape because vinyl is one of those things where as soon as you make a hole in it, the hole's there forever. So I need to either figure out if I'm picking out the basting stitches around the edge and then just doing a normal seam or what. Ugh, this sucks. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna have a think and then I'll come back and tell you what I'm doing. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to just forget the bias binding because that's not working and I don't have any more. I only bought like a yard, so we're gonna forget about that, as cute as that was. I'm gonna do fake binding. So I'm gonna rip out <laughs> my basting stitches and then we're gonna sew these wrong sides together and essentially, and then top stitch around the edge and that'll make kind of a fake binding look. Again, this isn't historically accurate, so it doesn't matter whether or not I finish it the historically accurate way. And I think, though I couldn't quite readily find them, I'm pretty sure there are examples of pockets that don't have binding on the outside. Um, I could be completely wrong on that. Again, I, I didn't quite find any resources to prove that, um, but I'm sure they exist. Onward. <laughs> Onward and upward with the tentacle seam ripper. We're essentially doing like a backwards French seam because what we're gonna do is instead of stitching wrong sides together, we're stitching right sides and then encasing after we trim that raw edge, we're gonna encase it with that top stitch. I think it'll still look cute either way. So important, important note here, make sure you leave that unzipped so we can turn it inside out because we're gonna go all the way around the edge. Think I have plenty of room? Yes, I do. Okie dokie. And this way, because we're doing on this side versus how we, I was trying to base it the other time, this will go through the machine much easier because of the cotton that I have as the lining. Again, I'll be doing a not so French French seam where I'm sewing right sides together, but then I'll be doing a top stitch on the outside that kind of gives it a faux bias bound look. Uh, this is my workaround because I could not figure out how to get any of that stuff to work. Again, if you have any helpful uh, tips about sewing with uh, faux leather in, you know, general, please help me <laughs> comment down below. Thank you. Your help is much appreciated. Remember when I mentioned that some of the adhesive on these wasn't so great? Yeah, this one started to not be so great either, so I had to shock and awe hot glue this one down. Now, I generally avoid hot glue in my uh, projects that were going to take some wear and tear, but this is all I could think of other than hand sewing the damn thing down, and I definitely did not want to be doing that.
So I just want to give a shout out to my friend Jenny who has an Etsy at uh, Maker Jenny. She has this super cute zombie pin holding a milk tea. It is the cutest. She should have some more up in her store for you to buy and you can go follow her uh, Twitter and TikTok at Leota. That I'll put all the links somewhere for you to find her, but she makes really cute stuff. She's also working on some custom pill boxes right now. I highly recommend her videos. She does really cute stuff. I mean, just look at that. Perfect for a glamour goal, huh? And because I never know when to quit, I also wanted to add on a little charm to the zipper to help me pull it up and down. And I had all these little bat charms, so I figure, why not add a bat? <laughs> If you want to know where I got all of these patches and pins at, you should go check out my Instagram. I will put a link post with all the links to all the different companies that made these different things. To the best of my ability, some of these patches were actually gifts, so it might be harder to find than I think. <laughs> Again, I love this pocket and how it came out. If you want to see more videos like this, stick around, subscribe, join the ghoul gang, and keep it creepy. This was a very fun experiment. I hope you will make your own one of these and hopefully yeah i actually really love it i've been using it for about a week now maybe a little bit more than that and it's like my favorite go-to bag i literally grab it all the time my pins have stayed in it which makes me happy because i'm always really paranoid about losing my pins and the patches have mostly stayed on the only one that i'm having issues with is this guy but that's because of other things <laughs> i highly highly encourage you to make your own pockets i will include a hashtag somewhere around here to show me your pockets.